our senior fellow, Dr. Jurgen, who's going to be going off to uh, Phoenix at the end of this academic year. He's going to be talking about uh, PVR, or proliferative vitreoretinopathy. retinopathy. Uh, it's a situation we deal with a lot in this uh, academic setting. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. I have about a 18 to 20 minute talk and I have 10 minutes, so if anybody needs to leave, it's okay, and I'll shorten things as best I can. I do have a surgical video, and what I'll do is I'll play it at the end instead of during the talk for those who need to leave. Um, so uh, I have maybe some upcoming financial disclosures, but none now. <laughs> A uh, typical history of a patient with PVR, uh, although this, this can definitely vary, they come in with uh, sometimes a long duration of a retinal detachment. We've seen people present a year after their detachment occurred. Um, you know, maybe they'll have a first surgery that's a PPV, or maybe they'll have a buccal vit. Uh, and then they just go through this cascade of redetaching, formation of scar tissue, redetachment, another surgery, another surgery, put in gas, put in oil. Um, and so they kind of circle the drain and tend to do uh, much more poorly than other patients who have retinal detachments. Uh, this is just one of our patients who's had, I think, eight different surgeries, and you can see um, quite a bit of scar tissue here, this epiretinal proliferation. Some of this might be subretinal. Some of this looks tractional. It's actually deceiving here, optic nerve, old retinotomy with scar tissue around it. Um, so these, these are, this is a very common appearance of a fundus that has had uh, multiple surgeries due to PVR. Um, so what is PVR? It's basically uh, cells that have migrated into an area, a compartment of the eye, where they don't usually exist, and then they proliferate, and they can form membranes, and they can form contractile scar tissue. So how does it form? Uh, the most accepted theory is that you first have a retinal break that liberates our PE cells into the vitreous, where they don't normally live. And then there are vitreous growth factors like TGF-beta and inflammatory cytokines that then cause these RP cells to survive, proliferate, and undergo uh, this process called epithelial mesenchymal transition. Um, and then leads to another process of proliferation and invasion and then contraction. And what's interesting about PVR is that certain eyes will arrest at different parts of the cycle and other eyes will keep moving straight into that contraction phase. And you can see in this um, study here where they have the TGF beta um, uh, showing this uh, increase in the signaling, and increase in the production of this molecule over time, which many uh, attribute as one of the bigger triggers or molecules involved in the formation of PVR. Um, so who's at risk for PVR? Well, practically speaking, I've seen PVR happen in, um, in eyes that I never thought would get PVR. But the classic risk factors are um, RD that's extensive, retinal tears that are large, especially giant retinal tears, preoperative PVR, meaning they're presenting with it at the time of diagnosis, vitreous hemorrhage with their retinal detachment, or you could also include in that intraocular hemorrhage during retinal surgery or after retinal surgery. Um, trauma is a huge uh, risk for PVR and also intraocular inflammation or infection, and specifically, um, as our uveitis service service knows all too well, our patients with CMV, RN, PORN. Um, are very at, uh, very at risk for this. So, it occurs in five to ten percent of all regmatogenous RDs, but uh, fifty percent or more of ruptured globes. And there are no agents thus far that have been successful in treatment of PBR other than surgery. And this is another uh, you know imaging modality OCT here showing uh, through uh, a patient's very. Um, anatomically disruptive PVR is uh, almost no normal looking retinal architecture there because it's such an infiltrative process. Um, grading, uh, I, I think I can skip this slide is mainly for the residents. Uh, basically we grade it but it doesn't necessarily change our management because if it's there surgically we have to address it. Um, so what's PVR made of? Uh, there's, th these are just some nice photos that show the different cell types that are involved. We have glial tissue and immune cells. All of these cell types are in the membranes, and then the intraretinal fibrosis has a, a little bit of a different milieu um, of cells. Um, in, in terms of why PVR makes us so sad all the time is because it's responsible for 75% of our surgical failures. Um, it's basically the rock in the shoe of every retinal surgeon. Uh, it can ruin a, a perfectly good outcome, perfectly good surgery, and turn it into a, a uh, you know, count fingers 
LP2400 kind of case, and it's a medical problem. It's not a surgical problem, but unfortunately, the only way we know how to address it is um, with surgery. So, um, and questions about timing of surgery. So, this becomes a, a big question for us. This is something I've faced multiple times during our, just our fellowship here, is you have a patient who had a good outcome, and now they're starting to form PVR, and it's early after their surgery. They were MAC on, and now they have PVR, and their macula is starting to come off. Do you rush into this eye, or do you wait? You know, the literature and what we know about PVR says you should probably wait, and we have absolutely sat on these eyes that used to be MAC on, and now they're MAC off, but if you go in and try and peel these membranes when they're immature, they come off in little tiny pieces. And what you want is for the PVR to come off in one beautiful sheet. Um, this is where I was gonna show a video. So what's been tried, uh, pretty much, you know, almost every anti-inflammatory agent is really amazing. Um, so this is, this is the list, I th you know, you would think that if something anti-inflammatory was going to be the solution, it would have been steroids because they knock out the entire inflammatory cascade. Uh, but the sad you know, answer to this was they actually did a randomized prospective trial. 140 patients uh, did not improve the anatomic uh, success rate with dexamethasone implant. So that was, I think, uh, you know, di very disappointing to see. Methotrexate, um, I think, has been gaining uh, some interest. There's been a few really good recent studies, and uh, this, uh, this was done in 2016. They put 40 milligrams of methotrexate in their infusion bottles, uh, and they did have uh, you know, very good uh, attachment. Uh, they only used 29 eyes, so it's hard to say that this is significantly powered at all. Um, but 90% were attached, and they included... Uh, PVR, TRD with PVR, and they also included inflammatory-related detachments. Um, and then this was a, a really n nice study where uh, Dean Elliott and crew over at Mass Ioneer took, um, they actually created a, an, a new in vitro model for PVR, which I think is huge in the future for studying PVR, um, where uh, they took PVR membranes from six patients who had grade C or high-grade PVR, and actually cultured those membranes and grew them out in cell culture and then studied them and also studied the effect of methotrexate on those cultures. And uh, what's great about this is most of the literature so far, most of the research that's been done on PVR has been um, like an RPE cell culture base and as opposed to a human PVR membrane. So th this was a, a really neat change for the field and I think opens a lot of doors for studying PVR. Um, so in this study, um, up here, you can see uh, the cell density on control, and this is six weeks later. Cell density hasn't changed much. This is actual human PVR membranes. And then these are concentrations of methotrexate, and you can see a very big difference in the cell density and also uh, the activation of caspases, which are associated with apoptosis. Um, and then you can also see here just some nice data on the cells per high power field and the control versus methotrexate and the um, percent of positive cells for apoptosis. Um, and uh, th this study, uh, I think, has opened the door for, m for more clinical studies about methotrexate. Um, and also another interesting finding in this study was that pretty much all six PVR membranes had different cellular compositions when they proliferated. So what, th what we also learned from this study is that PVR is not a homogenous process. It is not something that the same treatment may work for all people um, because the kind of milieu of what's forming the PVR in that specific guy may be different. Um, so there are questions about methotrexate. We've certainly talked about it on our service a few times in these patients who have had recurrent attachments. Um, and really the, the jury has not decided yet on what is the best way to inject PVR if you're going to do it, how often it has a very short half-life. But also, we do know certain other facts about, PV, uh, about methotrexate, like it's safe to use in the eye, we use it in uveitis, and it's uh, safe to use in silicone oil um, as well, which many of these patients would have. So, uh, and then this is another study. I don't know if I'm out of time. I kind of am out of time. Uh, so basically, I'll summarize this one really quickly. This was an RPE-based model, um, and, and what they uh, did was they, they basically took from the anterior segment literature that we use amniotic membrane, things like Procara. And now I know we're studying, uh, we have an IRB here at the U to study, uh, I think, more of a, a, like a liquid drop form of amniotic membrane. Um, and so is that, are the effects, anti-inflammatory, anti, -inflammatory, anti 
uh, dysregulated wound healing effects of amniotic membrane or, its pro or the molecules within, do they apply to PVR? And basically, they, they were able to purify a derivative of the amniotic membrane into a specific molecule that um, has the anti-inflammatory properties um, and suppresses inflammatory and scarring responses. And then uh, they did an in vitro study, and this molecule uh, dose-dependently inhibited proliferation. It also inhibited migration and collagen gel contraction, and it was non-toxic. Uh, and this was uh, in an in vitro study, so it, and they're, they're going to be studying this in rabbits next. So it's, I think this is also another exciting molecule. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of areas for research in PBR, and these are some other new therapies that are being looked at. And so it's an exciting time, but it's an incredibly frustrating time to be caring for patients who have PBR. Um, be, yeah. Um, all right. And for anyone who wants to stay, you do, obviously, uh, only if you have time, I have like a two-minute video of uh, what one of these surgeries looks like because we often don't get to share surgical videos. So I'm putting in ports here. This is a surgery I did last year with Dr. Bernstein. I always go this fast. Um, no, I'm just kidding. This surgery is at like 4X or 8X. So you can see um, over here, I'm doing an epiretinal membrane peel. Um, and these are, these are actually subretinal bands. Um, and so uh, right here, I'm making a retinotomy to access the subretinal space. Or maybe I haven't done it yet. Hold on, who's coming? Um, so I've done the epiretinal peel. Of course, that took like an hour. But uh, you'll see this is going to turn white uh, and going to burn a hole through the retina. And uh, now I'll go in with the max grip forceps. And I'm going to go enter the subretinal space and try and grasp it at the middle of the membrane. But of course, yeah, you don't want to grasp the choroid because you can cause massive bleeding. And then uh, you have to pay attention while you're peeling subretinal membranes you have to pay attention to where your tractional forces are. You can rip the retina straight off uh, while you're doing this. Um, you can, I mean, you almost always cause some sort of a tear. But this was just such a cool membrane because what you're going to see, it's like, this is like the last baby I gave birth to. You know, it's like, it's going to, there's this huge complex that comes out. Do you mean last baby you delivered? Delivered, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm kind of giving birth here. My first. So it's, it's this like slow, painful process of getting it out. You have to be so, so, so gentle. So you see now I've changed my tractional force to be going a different direction because you, you know what pegs are still left. Um, and this is, you know, this is like 4X or 8X. I know it feels slow and you just want it to come out, but believe me, it's so, uh, you know, and it's amazing how much was actually underneath this retina. Um, so you can't see it yet, but there's a still huge complexes down here and down here, and it's not over yet. And one of the things that's kind of challenging in retina surgery is once you drop something like that, then it's floating in saline. It's actually a little bit harder to pick up because it tries to move away from you. Um, so you'll see me struggle with that for a second of regrasping the membrane. And you also need to regrasp close to the origin of uh, where, where it is because you want to be pulling with control. So you'll see this last peg down here. You'll see it start to slide out as I pull up. <laughs> These are what we deal with with PVR membranes, and they're incredibly challenging, fun cases, very diverse. If I think there was like two hours more of this surgery, dealing with all this scar tissue. There you go, you can see it leaving the subretinal space there. So that's the end of the video, but, so. Any questions? Yeah, we all hope for a, some type of a medical means that we can stop that process. It's when you look at the rate limiting step of getting that final 10 to 15% of patients, this is the this collision point, this is the big point. Yeah. This is far away. It'd be great. You know, I tell patients all the time, I wish I had something to inject or do to your eye to stop this process, but we, ha we right now function in a very reactionary way with PVR. Probably because there's multiple different inflammatory processes that can result in this, so there's probably not a single bullet that's going to work. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's Thank you. Good.